my friends. Welcome back. We're starting chapter three. How exciting is that? Not very. Okay, but uh, I'll try and make it as exciting as possible, okay? Chapter three is talking about equilibrium of a particle. A particle is a single point, okay? So in chapter three, everything we talk about is going to be a single point. Because if I put forces on a single point, right, F1, F2, and F3, if, I, if that's not a single point, if it's not a particle, if it's big, right, then I had something like this, and I might have like F2, there's maybe F3, and then F4, right? If it's not a single point, then when I pull on that guy, what's going to happen? Well, you can see that I'm going to get some rotation there, right? When I'm talking about a particle or a single point, there's not any rotation. So this chapter won't have any rotation, no spinning stuff. We'll save that for the next chapter, okay? So what we're talking about here is um, how to find uh, equilibrium, which means, what does equilibrium mean? It means it's not moving, it's staying still for a particle or a single point. So in this chapter, all of the forces you're going to see are going to go to a single point. And remember, we called those concurrent vector forces from a video a little bit back a little bit, okay? Because what we have here is this. Um, we've been talking about this, right? We've been talking about vectors, okay? Some of the forces equal zero, right? And that's, there's a vector symbol over both of those, right? Uh, so we had vector equations like IJK equations. Well, let me, let, me, let me throw one of those IJKs at you, right? Let's say we had this, force vector F equals, because to be in equilibrium, that thing can't be moving in the x direction or the y direction in 2D, and in 3D, it can't be moving in the z direction, right? And so um, the sum of the forces in the x have to be zero, the sum of the forces in the y have to be zero. So could we have something like this? 10 i hat plus, uh, oh, let's go negative so it cancels out, right? Negative 10 j hat. So that's zero, right? Oh my, if you said yes, I'm gonna come get you. It's a trap, right? Because look, what do we have here, right? 10 is like this, right? There's 10 in the X, and then that's negative 10 in the Y, so that would be like that. Now y'all know about this, right? The resultant of those two vectors would be something like that, okay? That is not zero because that's 10 and that's negative 10 does not make that vector zero. No, no, no. The only way that a vector they come out to zero is if the x part of it's zero and the y part of it's zero. It's the only way. Okay, so what we're basically doing here is we're taking one vector equation, okay? That's one vector equation and turning it into two scalar equations. And in, and in 3D, three scalar equations, right? So what that's going to allow us to do, since we have two equations, is solve for two unknowns, right? Remember, you have to have an equation for every unknown you're going after. So if I've got six unknowns, I better have six equations, okay? So let's see if we can solve this little problem over here. Find theta and F3. Here's F3, and it's at some unknown angle so that the system is in equilibrium. If the system's in equilibrium, that means it's not moving. If it's not moving, that means that the sum of the force in the x and the y must be equal to zero. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, so the first thing I would do on this problem is I would take all of those vectors because it's a vector at an angle, and so my brain is going, hey, you gotta break those into components, so let's do that, okay? Here we go. So this guy is gonna have two components, this guy has two components, and this guy has two components, okay? And let's just label them right quick. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, we're supposed to be good at this by now. We should have a lot of practice, okay? So this guy here, it, here's the angle. Remember, make a triangle, right? So this is the opposite side. So this is a 200 sine of 25, and then this guy right here is 200 cosine 25, okay? See if you can do the rest of them. Push pause and see if you can do the rest of them. Okay, are you back? Let's we'll see if we can get it right here, okay? This guy is 100 cos 30. This guy is 100 
sine 30. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that guy's going the negative direction, so he's going to be negative. Don't forget about that. So this guy over here is um, F3 cos theta, and this guy is F3 sine theta. Now, I didn't put a negative in front of it because that arrow pretty much tells me the sign. It tells me that's negative in the y, or the x rather, and positive in the y, right? Okay. So with that, man, the rest is going to be easy. Once you have this done, the rest, cake. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let's see if we can do it. Some of the forces in the x, and then some of the forces in the y. And both of the, it's in equilibrium, so both of those are zero. So in the x direction, all we have to do is take everything that's in the x direction there, which is that, that, and that, and whoop, put them in that equation, right? Now for me, I'm kind of weird, but I like all the positive stuff to go first, because if I get a negative thing, then I have an equals, and then a negative sign, and it's easy to lose it, right? So I always do all the positive stuff first, okay? 100 cos 30 plus, that's that guy, plus uh, 200 cos 25. Uh, minus than this guy, F3 cos theta, okay? And then the y equation, what goes in the y equation? Well, it would be these two guys and then that guy down there, right? So uh, 100 sine 30 um, plus F3 sine of theta and then minus 200 sine of 25. Okay, let me get my calculator. All right, so I'm just going to rewrite these equations and get them a little simpler because this whole thing here is just a number. That whole thing there is just a number. All right, let's see if we can get this a little bit simpler here, okay? So 100 um, cosine of 30 um, plus 200 cosine of 25 equals, whoa, did I do that right? Cosine of 30 is 0.866, so that's 86.6 plus 200 cos 25. Okay, yeah, I did do it right. Okay, so that tells me that 267.86 is going to be equal to F3 cos theta, right? I just combined those two numbers together and moved that guy to the other side where the zero is, and I get this equation. Let's do the same thing here. Sine of 30, that's a half, so that's 50, and then 50 minus that guy, so 50 minus 200 sine 25 is equal to negative 34.52, but we'll move that negative to the other side, so 34.52 is equal to uh, F3 sine theta, okay? Now the trick here is to go after the cosine, okay? So I want to take this and move it to the other side. So F3 is equal to 267.86 divided by cos theta, okay? Now I'll take that and plug it into this F3, and I get this. 34.52 is equal to, um, I'm going to plug in this for F3, so I get 267.86 um, times sine of theta over cosine of theta, right? Yeah, the cos, the, it was really over here, right? But that's the same as putting it over there, it doesn't matter, right? Okay. So what is sine over cosine? Hey, that's why, I, that's why I always go after the one with cosine in it, to get cosine on the bottom, because sine over cosine is, is tangent, right? So tan theta is equal to, and I have to move this to the other side, 34.52 divided by 267.86, and I can do that in my calculator, can I? 34.52 divided by 267.86 equals 0.1288, and then I can just do inverse tan of that, and I get, drum roll please, 7.34. So theta is only equal to 7.34 degrees. So this guy is really at a really shallow angle, isn't he, to make this whole thing balance? And it kind of makes sense. Like if you're playing tug of war, which angle do you have to be at to, uh, to make this thing work? 
Okay, so now what? Well, this is easy, right? Take that number, and let's just plug it right into there, and then boom, I know how big F3 is, don't I? Okay, so F3 is 267.86 divided by the cosine of 7.34, which is 270. Okay, so uh, F3 equals 270 newtons. Okay, and there you go. So the whole thing is, is in this chapter, is being able to break forces down into components and then equilibrium means that we got to set them equal to zero and it allows us to have multiple equations to solve for multiple unknowns. Just wait to see the problems this is going to let us do. Okay, here we go.